Which you guys got another video here for you on things to look for when purchasing either a used or a brand new computer. And we're going to be taking a look at some of the things that people will do to try and mask the truth from you to end up trying to make as much profit as possible. Now, this is quite uh, publicized on YouTube. You'll see quite a few people talking about flipping PCs for a profit. And what they do is they use old parts and put them into an RGB case. Another common thing they do, which is literally not telling you what the CPU is, and that's being deceitful. This is a Core i7. doesn't tell you what generation it is, and you look right away through this listing, and it will tell you that it's just Core i7. And I can tell you right now, it's probably going to be a really old CPU in there, and they're just trying to mask it uh, and make it look like it's a brand new computer. But when you're really getting a really old system, they can pick these old CPUs up pretty cheap. And what they will do is they will be build cheap PCs and make maximum profit. Now, is that a crime? It is when you're not disclosing it and you're trying to mask the truth from people like they're doing right here. So there's a lot of people doing this on YouTube as well. And I think it's quite deceitful. But you can see right here, choose the uh, powerful Intel Core i7-4770. That is an old CPU. That CPU was released on June 2013, which is a long time ago and they're putting it across as a new system. So you are literally paying all that money for an old uh, CPU, which you can pick up pretty cheap on eBay. And this is what they do. And this is what a lot of people promote on YouTube when they're flipping PCs, buying old components like these, putting them into a brand new case and making them look like a top end gaming system when you're really buying a CPU from 2013 in this case. And if you're disclosing the truth, you're just scamming people, in my opinion. It also has DDR3 in here. We're already on DDR5, so we're on DDR3 in this system. And that means you're going to end up with micro stutters and other issues when playing games with this old CPU. Especially when you put a modern day GPU inside that system with that old CPU, it's going to bottleneck and have major issues. And you're going to also have, you know, 100% CPU usage and micro stuttering and also input lag and stuff like that on this old system. So that's what you can expect to get when you're purchasing old systems like this. Now, the system is also going to have an RX 5700 XT in it, which was released on July 2019. So a 2019 GPU and a 2013 CPU. You're going to have major issues with that system. There's going to be a lot of issues when playing games. It will play them, but you will end up with 100% CPU usage, a major bottleneck issue with that system. So look at the motherboard in here, ITX motherboard. Even the graphics doesn't tell you anything about the system. DDR memory it doesn't want to tell you it's DDR3. It just says DDR16 gigabytes. 512 gigabyte SSD doesn't tell you about uh, whether you're going to get an M.2 uh, NVMe drive in there or whether you're going to get an SSD. You're probably just going to get a, a small two and a half inch uh, SSD in there because they're cheap and you can pick them up for £10. And it's all about cutting costs to make maximum profit. And all these CPUs and motherboards can be purchased on AliExpress. These motherboards are sometimes Chinese motherboards. And I can see there, there's some green ports on that motherboard. And these cheap Chinese boards, you can pick them up on AliExpress. It does have an M.2 slot on there. They're definitely not going to be using that. They'll definitely use something like a two and a half inch drive because it'll be cheaper. And again, LGA 1150 DDR3 ATX motherboard. They can also pick up micro ATX and ITX boards, depending on what's the cheapest. Cheap cooling fan. The problem you get with these is they don't have any RGB headers on the motherboard. And what that means is they will have to use a hub and they would generally use these hubs that have, you know, constant on power. They have a button on the case which you push to change the RGB. And all it will do is it means the fans will spin at maximum speed because they'll be using SATA connection for these as well. Now, again, this one right here, you can see tiny little motherboard inside there. Uh, a big case, RGB fans, same old thing, uh, but it's got an RX 590 8 gig card in there, which is probably from China. And again, you've got an Athlon 3000G processor inside here as well. Uh, why you'd put that processor in there, I really don't know. And Well, I do actually, because they're cheap. You can probably pick these up for around about 40 odd pounds and you would be able to uh, piece together a PC 
that's cost very little to put together and it's made to look like a gaming system and all it's going to do is inconvenience the person that is going to be trying to play games on this thing. Yes, an RX 590 back in the day was a pretty decent card, but we're in 2025 now. And again, dressing it up looking like this to make it look like it's really nice and, and some young kid's going to see this and tell their dad they want this PC and guess what's going to happen? They're going to end up buying a potato. And this will prove they don't care about the customer. It's all about profit because the Athlon 3000G has two cores, four threads, and it scores 4,455. For a few more pounds, he could have gone and got the Ryzen 5 5600X and he would be able to get 21,861 points and you can see the price here for the Athlon 3000G is only £47.84. And that's going to give you two cores, four threads, and it's also going to give you the Radeon Vega 3 graphics, which isn't that great. It's a budget CPU. And what he could have done is for a little few more pounds, he could have gone and got a 32 or 3400G, which would have been 50% more performance than this uh, CPU right here. And it would have been the same socket socket uh, a and 4 you can see that's the 3200 let's go to the 3400 g right here 63 pounds and 43 pence but again it's all about profit he's not going to spend any more money on that system but look at the difference 44 55 for the 3000 g 5600 x is 21,861 and the 3400 g is 9218 which is you know relatively a decent performance compared to that other one so why you would put that in there i really don't know probably comes down to what he can get them for and what is going to be the maximum profit for him because he's not really thinking about the customer at this stage it's all about how much money he can make from these systems so the dodgy bit really comes down to the lack of disclosure of what's actually in the system flipping pcs is not a crime it's not a scam as long as you're honest with what you're actually selling if you're telling the person what is actually in the system and they're happy to buy it, then that's all well and good. But again, what I generally see is a lot of overpriced systems and they are sort of wearing an overcoat really with the RGB and all that sort of stuff. People get blinded by it and end up paying far too much for a system than what it's actually worth. Here's another one right here, 3000G and also this one has an RTX 2060 in it. So let's talk about the RTX 2060. You can see we've got an RTX 2060 with a Athlon 3000G right there. That combination right there is going to cause a major bottleneck. Even at 1080p, you're not going to have an enjoyable experience because of the CPU will let that system down because it's only a two core four thread, in my opinion. But again, you are spending money on a poorly configured system and uh, that's what you're going to get. And that's £465, which isn't cheap. So if you are looking to buy something, these are the things you need to look at. CPU processor. Check the model, generation, and performance level, and when it was released. That's important. Next, GPU. Check the uh, age of the GPU, what condition it's in, and whether you've got any major issues with that GPU. Uh, that's another important thing to check. And make sure it's got warranty just in case there's something wrong you can return it another thing to do is make sure the cpu and gpu is from the same era that way if there isn't a major issue for instance a fourth gen intel processor and a pretty modern rtx gpu you're going to get bottlenecks with that system and it's going to cause you no end of issues ram make sure that you've got dual channel memory not just one single stick and make sure it's of at least i would say ddr4 DDR5 if possible. DDR3 systems are pretty much old at now and they're pretty much done for uh, with the end of Windows 10 coming real soon. When it comes to motherboards, you need to check the brand and model number. Make sure it's not some Chinese brand motherboard that has no name because you're going to have an issue with those boards in the future. Also, another thing to remember is make sure it's not an OEM type of board, i.e. HP Dell Optiplex or one of those particular types of boards that have been taken out of some of those systems and put into a fancy case with some RGB uh, and make it look like a modern computer. Steer clear of all those. They're not worth buying. You're just going to get your fingers burnt. So always check the brand and model number. Make sure it's got plenty of slots, enough of memory on that board. Memory, again, make sure that memory is DDR4 or even DDR5 
if you can. If it's a new system, make sure it's DDR5. But if it's a used PC, DDR4 is still okay. But make sure you've got more than one stick of RAM inside those builds because that's another thing they do is put one stick of RAM uh, to save money. Power supplies, it goes without saying, this has to be a decent brand power supply. None of the junk that you see in some of these systems that has been shipped with because most of those will obviously let go at some point and it will take all your components with it. So that is a really important list of things to check if you are buying a used or even a new computer. Also, one last thing, storage. Uh, make sure the motherboard has an M.2 slot on it and it supports NVMe drives and it's Gen 3 and above. At least that way you'll have some reasonable speeds from that storage there. If they're not populating it and it does have one, then they're probably using a cheap branded SSD just because they are cheap to buy like £10 on the internet and that's why they're using them. Another thing to look out for is the RGB itself. If it doesn't have any headers on the motherboard, then they're probably using some cheap hub from China and basically using the button on the case as changing the colors because it doesn't have any sort of headers on the board to change the colors. If you want to see what one of these cheap PCs look like, then check out Tim's Computer Repairs channel. A guy paid $1,000 or so for this PC and it's absolutely horrendous. It really is. And he goes through and shows you exactly what he got for his money and it's an old CPU in there. So check it out. I'll leave a link for that in the video description if you want to see what they look like. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on our Discord server. The link is in the video description. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.